This conference will now be recorded. Uh, first thing on the agenda is the consent agenda. It's the approval of the minutes uh, from the August 2nd meeting. Uh, all we have to do is just all, all I, right, Frank, for the consent agenda? If you're comfortable with them as written. Okay. Everybody good? With? Okay. Uh, next is a review of all the undeveloped parcels larger than two acres. And uh, Frank, can you give up, can you put up the... I sure can. If I could, um, for the members who don't already have their microphone on, if you could just turn it on and leave it on. You're, you're on, Mike, just so that that's how people on the video can hear through that. So, so this is the, um, you know, we, we had our conversation at the last meeting where we talked about um, possibly making some allowance for townhouses, condos, patio homes, things of that nature. Uh, on any of the larger parcels in town. And it seemed clear during that discussion that there was no circumstance um, that I perceived from the planning board that, that you would entertain that idea for anything smaller than two acres. So I chose to limit this review to all of the parcels in town that are two acres or greater. Um, and there are basically 20 of them. And as I wrote in the written materials, just a disclaimer, um, there are limitations to the software and the coding in the GIS database. So if we've missed a parcel um, or inadvertently included one that we shouldn't have, uh, please forgive me. It's just a matter of the coding in the GIS database and we could certainly explore any of those parcels any further. Um, so with that uh, important caveat, um, two acres was the threshold. And so there are 20 there are a total of uh, 11 parcels that are outside the triangle, and there are a total of nine that are inside the triangle. And um, in, based on the land use plan and based on the previous conversations that the board engaged in, uh, it seemed that there was general consensus that um, any additional residential housing options would be appropriate in the, inside the triangle, generally speaking. Um, that seemed to be the sentiment of the land use plan, seemed to be the sentiment of the planning board. So depending on what the planning board's goals are, you may want to focus on just those parcels outside of the triangle at this time. Um, as we talked at your last meeting, I think the triangle uh, per se is a much more significant discussion um, that you should consider lots of different things, whether it be the locations of new roads or wastewater treatment issues. Um, or the vision outlined in the land use plan and how you can best encourage that, uh, if that's what you like to see in there. So I think that's really a more complex discussion. Um, so you may wanna focus your efforts tonight just on the parcels outside of the triangle that might be appropriate for uh, other housing options in the future. And I wanna emphasize to everyone here in the room and in the audience that I use the word might very deliberately because this exercise is really just to have a discussion about where something like that may work in the future. Any future uh, decisions to allow that kind of development on those properties would require a formal rezoning request from the property owner, would have to go through the planning board and then ultimately to the board of commissioners for approval. This exercise tonight is really just to kind of get a general sense of what this group thinks might be appropriate in the future. There may certainly be parcels that this group identifies where, hey, this parcel might be appropriate for patio homes in the future. And by the time it goes through a process, coming back to the planning board and the board of commissioners, the decision may be no, that's not appropriate at that time. So this is kind of a precursor to that in, in the future, so to speak. So I'll walk you through the, the parcels very quickly and you have all this um, in your packet. I included uh, another list that shows the size uh, of those properties. So outside the triangle, um, this first parcel, well, you can't see it actually, it doesn't show up on the screen. Parcel number one, um, that is the parcel that really started this conversation. It's that Pine Lake Star Hill Drive parcel. It's about 4.4 acres. Um, that's currently zoned R30. That's something that you may wanna consider. Um, Number two is a 13.2 acre parcel right across uh, Star Hill Drive, um, across from St. Augustine Drive. Um, perhaps the most interesting residential parcel left in the town at this point. 
Uh, number three is 2.9 acres just north of the kayak launch on Highway 58. Um, number four is the parcel that was um, a townhouse request, a special use permit request a few months ago. Uh, that's about 2.3 acres. Uh, I'm going to skip ahead all the way to number uh, six. Um, which I inadvertently listed parcel five as outside the triangle, so I apologize. Number six is uh, a parcel, it's 12 acres. It's just outside the town limits. It's in the ETJ, uh, just to the east of Taylor Notion Road, northeast of the intersection uh, with Taylor Notion and Highway 24. Number seven uh, is a parcel that backs up to Highway 58 between Bonita Street and Highway 58, 2.3 acres. Number eight, is the parcel um, at the terminus of Live Oak Drive. Um, depending on, there's a question about the ownership of the road down there. If it is um, owned by the town, it may be some different number, but this shows it as 4.2 acres. And so it's less than five acres. It's zoned R10M. And I think that's because the road is factored in there too. So there's an open question on that. Could be more than five acres, could be less than five acres. I think it's 4.2 based on the GIS. And that's currently zoned R10. Nine is 17.6 acres. That's the big parcel uh, right between uh, Channel View Court and Bogue Sound Drive. Um, number 10 is 3.1 acres on the west side of Channel View Court, and number 11 is 4.9 acres on WB McLean Drive across from Cape Point. Um, those are the parcels that I think are most relevant to this discussion. Certainly, if there's others that the planning board would like to consider, we can talk about those. We can pull up the dimensions or the acreage, what have you, on parcels. Or if you think there's something that the map is incorrect, we can check that going forward. So, um, with that, I think that. Um, You've got the possibility of maybe rezoning those parcels to the existing R10M district, uh, potentially with an amendment that would allow uh, that development to occur on any parcel larger than two acres. And so you might want to think about uh, these particular uh, locations that I just outlined for you. Um, you may want to also think about the standards that were presented to you at your last meeting um, and whether or not those standards might be more appropriate in some new zoning district. We talked about an RMF zoning district and a residential cluster zoning district. The residential cluster was intended to promote patio homes. The RMF was intended to allow condos, townhouses, things of that nature. Um, the proposal at your last meeting included more stringent standards uh, for those types of development in the future. Whereas if you decided you may want to take some of these parcels and identify them for potential rezoning to R10M, there are maybe less stringent standards than were proposed at your last meeting uh, that we had a couple of weeks ago. So with that, I'll stop and answer any questions you have and, and entertain the board's discussion about what, if anything, you would like to do on this issue. I have a question about the triangle. It's, Frank, you said it's kind of off limits for tonight's meeting because it's a lot more involved. I, I wouldn't say that it's off limits for tonight's meeting. I think you really have two separate questions for you. One is, are there parcels in the existing residential areas that might be appropriate for some sort of other housing types? And then the other question is, what do you want to see in the triangle? And I think that's just a broader question. It's into the whole land use plan, town center concept, and a lot more complicated issues, ownership so issues. My question on the triangle part. I'm looking at southeast corner and I, well I, my question just generically is do we have the same issues with all the property within the triangle or just certain parts of the triangle i'm not sure i understand the question well, um, I'm just because of the, the perceived complexity of the development of property within the triangle i'm wondering if that complexity applies uniformly through all properties within the triangle or a major section of the triangle. Yeah, okay, I, I understand the question. I think it's more germane to the bulk of the green properties that you see in the center. I think on the fringes, maybe the two, the oh, northern- 12, for example. Yeah, so the northern point and the eastern point, those may be a slightly different discussion. Um, but generally speaking, it's numbers 
13, 14, 15, 13 through 20. Um, I think it's probably the meat of the discussion when it comes to the, the town center concept and the more complicated issues. Um, but ultimately that's up to you and this board to make that judgment, but that's my perception. So uh, the land use plan talks about uh, low density single family homes outside of the triangle and uh, medium density inside the triangle. And I, I would like to see us uh, be consistent with that, with the land use plan. Uh, the map in the land use plan is like a blob that covers it it covers most of the triangle and in many places extend to the other side so for me when i'm talking about the triangle i mean anything inside of the triangle formed by keller notion 24 and 58 and across the street so on the opposite side of taylor notion and the opposite side of 24 uh, and and I am fine with uh, multifamily uh, the potential for some of those lots to be multifamily in there, uh, and I'm fine with with just two acres. I think we can. I, th I think we could effectively plan for uh, some medium density development and still protect the single family neighborhoods in town. Um, and I think it's worth going through each of those parcels. Does anybody have any, does anybody have any issue with what I just said? Does anybody have any issue with multi-family inside that doesn't mean the whole triangle is going to be rezoned multi-family it just means that our for the purpose of planning we see medium density remaining inside the triangle does that make sense if somebody who owns if if the owner of parcel number 16 up there is not ever interested in changing that B20 property, that is B20, isn't it? B20 is. Yeah. If they're never interested in changing that B20 property to multifamily, then that will forever remain B20. Just like number 13 is R30. Is it R? No, I'm sorry, it's R20. So if, if the owner of, of num parcel number 13, never has an interest in anything other than R20, well, then it will always stay that way. This is just the potential to entertain rezoning of any of those properties. We're not rezoning anything. It's just the planning for the potential for it. Does anybody have any opposition to that? Well, not really. Uh, we just talked about doing saving the triangle, and now we're into the last two discussions have been on the triangle. Uh, you would indicate it. I'm prepared to talk either the triangle or the areas outside the triangle. Well, we're going to go through that. I'm just making that statement before we move on because now I want to talk about each of those okay. properties outside the triangle. I think um, when you talked about uh, two acres, okay, I looked at depending on where it is. Uh, Four units per two acres is about equal to single family development when you consider the average lot size in Cape Carter is somewhere between uh, maybe 18,000 and pushing 20,000. So that that isn't really uh, medium density, that's low density. I think there's some places, especially outside of the triangle, that that would be more appropriate than medium density. But I agree that within if there are some areas within the triangle that uh, you wouldn't have to use that criteria if that makes makes sense it could be more dense yeah 
I, I think you know a key question for this group is what is low density and, and what is medium density? Um, and that was part of the thought process behind the proposal at the last meeting is that at the four units per acre, that's generally akin to single family density standards that might be low density. At the five and a half units per acre that you have in your R10M zoning district, maybe that's more medium density or six or eight is medium density. Um, ultimately, it's up to this group and the Board of Commissioners to make that judgment. But uh, generally speaking, I think you're... Yeah, what I was getting at, because I was kind of leaning to discuss the area outside the triangle first, as, as you brought up, because inside the triangle is far more complex. And as I went through the parcels that are up there, I I could... The, the word that we heard at the last meeting the meeting before that, I guess it was June actually, loud and clear that in the interior part of our 30, there was really no interest in uh, multifamily uh, type arrangements. But there are areas on the periphery, uh, I, I could be supportive of a multifamily type thing in units, uh, if you, I probably can't use this thing, but four, Got a hold of button. Oh, yours works. Four could be one of the multifamily. Three, um, six, which is already R10M. Okay. Uh, you know, whether that, when you're talking about that being R10M, it's been that way for years, and people have an expectation that someday there may be multifamily. So I don't have an issue with that being whether we change it to R10M or, or something else multifamily, that's fine. Uh, but those, those those parcels in there, uh, six, four, three, uh, and then across the street, uh, nine right there. I don't see that being multi being something that could be multifamily because it's part of it's in the floodplain. It's in nine, and that would uh, it, that might be an issue, but. So that's kind of outside the triangle, uh, how, I, how I feel uh, in the R30 district. Uh, eight, uh, parcel uh, eight is always been uh, an expectation that it would be multifamily. And however that, however that comes out, I'm fine with that because it's always been that way. People that live down there expect it to be. But for the interior places like uh, one and two, uh, I don't think from the input we heard in our June meeting that it's appropriate to do anything other than single family. I also did, just this is just a side note, that has nothing really to do with the discussion, but I did some calculations on the two um, places where we do have multifamily. And when you look at the tax value of the properties per acre, uh, you're talking single family at 2015, uh, uh, 2000 square, uh, 2015, uh, a far more tax value than the condos that exist. So it was just an interesting point. If you're talking about tax revenue or you're talking about the investment potential, the single family seem to seem to do better. And on the larger lot. Okie doke. Uh, I think area number nine on Country Club Point, 18 acres, is the best chance we have for assisted living right behind that uh, clinic. There is a large enough area that it can be completely buffered. You can't see the interior. Floodplain can be addressed. Can be addressed. It can be addressed, period. If you uh, build on piers, piles, whatever, it can, floodplain can always be addressed. Everybody on the waterfront is in floodplain. Well, I understand so, that, but, but I'm just rebutting what my opinion is of number nine. I'm not the owner, I'm one of many, but uh, there was deliberately an easement retained when. 
the family sold property to Neil Bender for a clinic to keep an easement to get out to the Highway 24, which now has a stoplight. Terrifically convenient and definitely desirable for that property's development. So that's just my opinion. Now, it could be that everybody in that neighborhood will say, not in my backyard, similar to the reaction for the numbers one and two. And if that's the case, uh, they'll just have to address it then. But I would love to see assisted living right next to the clinic, three levels of care, perhaps some clusters, perhaps some duplexes, patio homes, then assisted living followed by skilled nursing right behind the clinic. That's just my opinion for now. Just for reference. Yes, sir. They're not accepting any new patients there. So they, they I'm just have, letting you know. Yes, but <laughs> you're banking you. on uh, a medical facility. They're they're so already full. Here's the thing. They have half again as much land to expand that I sold them. And that clinic is now owned by the hospital in Newburgh. Neil Bender sold his entire practice to the hospital. So there are opportunities there. If the area supports the doctors there, they can be added to, the clinic can be added to. They've got plenty of land. Uh, they've got cooperative neighbors, in, at least in me and my siblings. So it, it could be done. And the fact that they're not accepting new patients could be in something I'll start working on. Be glad to start working on that because I'm one of their patients. And, uh, but it's very convenient. Very convenient. But they're not taking any patients. I hear you. But that can be changed. You know, I, I haven't heard since Deanna McGillman appeared before this board what's happened with her doc in a box. But I, I need to ask her how that's coming. But, you know. I don't think that will compare to the support that you get from Caroline East. Well, true. You know, the depth true. that you that you get. That's what's that's why it's so valuable to but have something like that next to like an assisted living. Many of us use physicians in that firm and in New Bern specialists and use that hospital. I'm not saying that's good or bad because of our own hospital and the strides they're making and have attempted to make. But I, I would hate to see that area single family. I just I just think that would be a terrible the, the point I was making is I agree with you with the assisted living, but in that location in AE9 flood zone, they're all going to have to be elevated significantly, and that doesn't fit well with older people. I mean, you're I live in AE910 as you do, and the the rules of the town were a plus two free board, uh, they would have to be quite high, and that would be difficult to do. They can be addressed, whether it's by ramps, whether it's by fill, whether it's by elevators, they can be addressed. We are not limited to single family all on one floor in this town. We're just not. We have more sense than to be that way. And we have expertise engineering that can overcome things of that nature. But that's just one, one opinion, one opinion. But gee, I'd love to see it so I could go there. Thank you, Madam. Sarah, you have anything? Um, I, similar to what they've said, um, we uh, up there and the question mark below that and um, four, right, talking in this larger conversation like matches what we were talking about with the um, land use plan um, on that side. Um, yeah, six and eight, if it's already R10M, obviously can't you know, go back against that. Um, 11 seems easy for either RMF or RC, um, but the ones that we um, talked about tucked into the neighborhoods, uh, the one, two, um, 10, I'm a little iffy on, and seven, um, I'm not sure that those would go over well for multifamily. Um, but I had this really silly idea, and I told. <laughs> the chair earlier about it. It seems really obvious, but, you know, we're talking about density as a hang-up, right? And it's it's not just because, you know, what's 
uh, in the land use plan, but it's also because of traffic and roads. We don't have a lot of funding for our road repairs and for storm waters for all those reasons. So what if, if they wanted to develop those properties that are tucked into the neighborhoods, if they just kept it at our highest density, 3.2? Seems really silly and really obvious, but if that style of, you know, it's the town home or it's um, the patio home um, is what's desirable, if we just keep it at the same density. You're saying in properties outside of the triangle, mm -hmm. like like one like or two. One two. Mm -hmm. I think we still fit a lot on there. Just it would be in a different style, but the same density. So that. That is at uh, the R13 density, right? 3.2 would be. It was what? Um, yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah. So it wouldn't be if it's a if it's a property currently in the R30. You're suggesting that it, Keep it our potentially house. could be um, an R13 rezoned to R13. Or one of our new. What were those numbers, please? What were those numbers? It was what we had discussed last time. It was the 3.2 um, units per acre. The, no, I mean the. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, the labeled number one, number two, uh, seven, and ten. I, I think that's certainly an option that you could consider. Um, you know, it's best, it's it's allowing those other housing options, but at a generally lower density and kind of similar in concept to what was presented the last time. Instead of four, it would be 3.2 units per acre. So it really would be up to this board and the board of commissioners. But that's a reasonable approach. Um, and you could, if you come up with a new zoning district, you could put whatever development standards in there you think are appropriate. So, but to answer the question, Pax, and when we looked at the the three zone, the, the residential zoning districts, it basically was anywhere from 2.2 to 3.2, depending on what zone you were in. So she's picking the highest of 3.2. So. I, I have another question. Okay. So what is the definition of development? For example, parcel number seven is a series of lots recorded in a subdivision governed by restrictive covenants limiting them to single family dwellings. So why would we even consider them undeveloped? What, what, what's the definition for developed? Does that mean having a house on it? Uh, does it mean having a paved street with utilities available? Because some of these are developed already that we're listing as undeveloped and some are not. You're talking about number seven, is that right? Specifically in this instance, yes, I'm talking about number seven. Yeah, so th the reason I included that in there is because we weren't able to find the covenants for that particular neighborhood. Now, they may limit it to single family homes only, but they may not. So I just wanted to err on the side of caution with that particular parcel. So if there are covenants that would limit that to single family homes, then you may not want to do that. Obviously, as again, the town does not enforce covenants. So, so but. but the neighborhood would probably would. Yeah. Now, last week, copies of the maps in Star Hill, specifically Star Hill. Um, and I'll be glad to go through and do the research. And it's, it's time consuming and I'm a lot cheaper than your town attorney, but uh, I'll be glad to do the same thing for Cape Carteret. Um, because that, that subdivision was the first one ever recorded in Cape Carteret, MacBook 4, page 53. Section A, Cape Carteret, mm -hmm. that's with two T's. My father recorded that in 1958, and it very specifically limits that area to single family dwellings. And it goes from Anita Port all the way over to Highway 58. Yeah, and if that's the case, I mean, certainly you can say that, but I think, Barbara, wasn't that the one where we couldn't find the limitation? on the single family homes. We could find that in some of the covenants, but we couldn't find it in that particular one, if I'm not mistaken. So do you have a covenant? Um, they're somewhere here in the yeah. And, and tonight I have brought and delivered Star Hill North. 
Okay. Just the recorded maps, because I, I, I just did Star Hill. Yeah. I think it was it was basically a moot point. Uh, the covenants and the limit on single family uh, residences only was a moot point in almost everywhere in the town. That was one of the ones where it was not a moot point, and we just couldn't find that restriction for that particular one. So, and if it exists, and we'll obviously we'll correct it. So, so um, it is in uh, an established developed neighborhood. Yes, single family homes and uh, so I would suggest that we would not want to change that from single family because it's it's both outside the triangle and within a, a, a developed um, built existing single family homes. So I would say that seven regardless of what the covenants are is not uh what i would recommend would be a yes for rezoning delta um, never asked for it to begin with but but i just wanted to point out it does yeah Now, the question mark, and I went into this earlier, the question mark beside number six on the on the map. Yeah. All right. Two of those lots are not built on, but they are in a subdivision. And the land adjoining them is an acre. So I would not consider that a two acre undeveloped parcel. Uh, I didn't quite understand. See the question mark next to number six. Oh, oh, okay, yeah. All right. Well, going back to what I said earlier, that has been zoned R10M for a very long period of time. No, no not number no. six. Question mark. Oh, side. okay. Side. Yeah. What What I was trying to just make you all aware of with the question mark and also the the other symbol, the ampersand. Um, you know, there may be other parcels that are currently developed that are more than two acres that might be redeveloped in the future. Obviously, can't predict that. There may be some situations where you have current vacant parcels that might be combined together that might add up to more than two acres, and obviously can't predict that also. And I just sort of looked very quickly, and in that location, there's a couple larger parcels that are not part of a subdivision, at least according to the subdivisions map, that maybe they'd be combined again maybe they wouldn't i just wanted to really just highlight the potential for that to happen in the future none of us can predict that and again it would be handled on a case-by-case -case basis like across from two there's i think five lots um i don't know what the covenants are there's some covenants uh it's in a subdivision um but i don't know i think that's it's six lots and no covenants you're talking, let's see if I can get this to register just a, on here. Just above two. Right this right there. Right in that area. No, 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 above it. I'm sorry. This thing, <laughs> yours was pretty good, Mike. What? <laughs> the purple one's better. Right in right this there. area. Where you're yes. Talking, right? Yeah. I think, I think there are six lots and no covenants. And those are the lots, you know, from the entrance to the Pettiford Creek Trail. That's the lots to the left of it. What name? You know, the Pettiford Creek Trail? The entrance to the wildlife. You mean the crow? Oh. Yeah, it's Pettiford. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. it's to the left. That's right. No, no covenants on the property. I, I wanted to, while we're talking about this, I just want to highlight a couple of things. So, this question mark here, there's a, a parcel here that might be two parcels. If it, It's unclear looking at the GIS. If it's one parcel, it's more than two acres, but there's some documentation that shows it's two parcels that are vacant. Um, and that was the reason for the question mark there. There is um, this parcel right down here at the corner of Taylor Notion and 24, um, has a very small little building on it. It used to be John McLean's office at some point in the past, um, but it's a, I think it's about 3.2 acres if I'm not mistaken, but something like that there. So there are those situations that exist out there 
you may want to think about. There's also the property in front of the aquatic center on Highway 24. I've seen some documentation that shows it might be slightly more than two acres. It might be slightly below two acres. So that's another parcel that's inside the triangle also, but just so you're aware of those kind of situations. Did you have anything else, Cheryl? Um, I, was just, I don't know if I mentioned number nine, but I'm okay with number nine. Which one? Number so nine is the 17 the acres. Yeah. Are RC, however you want to put it. Bruce? Well, Frank, could you clear that antivirus? Yeah, I'm sorry. You know, starting with the lowest number three up there, and you know, I'd want to make sure that doesn't bother the rest of the people in Star Hill. I guess that wouldn't have anything to do with them there. I don't know. It's across the water. Okay. And so the access would be 58, right? Yes. yes. All right. And then if we could throw on another couple of acres there, the question mark, that'd be great. That area. Uh, six. Kind of appeals to me. It's sort of already zoned for that as an expectation. Of, that hasn't taken off yet. And then uh, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. I like nine for all the things you said, but I, there's a whole lot of other work that needs to take place in terms of providing assisted living. Uh, and you know. Put 12 in there, even though that's in the triangle, I would include 12. But those are kind of the pieces that I'm looking for. Four. 12 for what? You would put 12. Four, four multiple. And that, uh, that's on commercial. And the one that you mentioned down there, John's office, that's B10 currently. Yeah. So, I mean, they can change. You know, Chair, um, you know, it's a lot of talk. Of, should, do we need to go around person by person, see if there's a consensus on any of this, um, of these things uh, to make it? Yeah, I, think, I just wanted to, I just wanted each member to have a chance to yeah. kind of say their, say the piece. Are you, is that it, please? That's it for me. Although I would say. What about four? You didn't mention four. It's right on tail notion. Yeah, uh, that's a question mark for me, whether that's, I, at one point I thought I'd like to see that, but I, you know, I'm really sensitive about what we've been hearing the last couple of weeks, yeah. and I don't know how that would play. You know, that, I was on the fence on that one also, but I, I went over and looked at it. It's based on Taylor Notion. Yeah, okay, it's actually became a notion and the golf course separates it. Yeah, there's a driving range right I'm not so it. sure that anybody would want to um, even entertain putting them in there when you could put single family in there, probably do this as well. So I, I don't know. I, well, right now you've got the, I don't know if the count, uh, condos or townhouses. Condos. You know, right in the same area. So, I mean, that would just be an extension of what's already. Yeah, that 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 speaks in favor of it that there's there's one already there, but when you look at the age distribution in this town and you, you, you go to this stuff, most condos and multifamily are two story, and uh, I'm not so sure that's the kind of housing you want for older people. Well, those are half and half, right? Two yeah. of them are, are single family, well, a low one, and yeah. two of them are up and down. Right, but more. More so than a single family, you see them as two stories. And, uh, you know, developers, I don't know. Well, we're not going to make the decision no. for old people, right? I know I want to be on one floor. Um, you know, that would be what I want. But other people may choose to build, like you see on an Emerald Isle, three story homes on stilts and they put in an elevator. Um, you know, so I think we, we just need to think in terms of. Um, where do we, where are we seeing potential for development that meets our land use plan 
and is consistent with what we want to see in Cape Carteret, representing all of Cape Carteret, not just what we individually want to see, uh, and then let the individual property owners make decisions on how they how, how they want to develop from there. It's what about Neil? I, I'm going to Neil. You want to weigh in here? Yeah, I will. Um, I don't think I'm going to add too much to the conversation because I agree with most of the things I've heard. But just for clarity, I'll sort of walk around the numbers and just give you a quick little assessment of what I think there. Um, number one, number two, those sort of go together in my book. Um, I was uh, in keeping with my opinion was in keeping with the majority opinion over the last several meetings until I heard Sarah. Uh, talk about her density idea, and I like that, and I think that would be a great option. Um, again, it's up to you know the property owners, but to maintain the density on those would be acceptable to me um, if they went multifamily because we're really not changing the characteristics of the neighborhood. Um, walking around to three, since it has access to 58, um, I'd be fine with that. Um, Number four, I would be fine with that because in my opinion, that's, and when I say fine with that in terms of having it multifamily, um, because it's in that transition area and it's in such close proximity to the other um, other townhomes in that, in that area on the lot adjacent to it, that it would be no departure of characteristics or character uh, from, you know, from the existing area that it's already, you know, in. Um, I'm not going to address anything in the, um, the the triangle right now, but I did want to say something about lot nine, Paxson. That's the best idea of the night. I love that idea, and I I agree with you 100%. You could address the flooding issues there. You could elevate some parking and then have a, a on grade entrance into the the homes or something like that. There's all kinds of things that you could do. Those guys are amazing. Thanks, Neil. Sure. Frank, could you give me the map again? So here is here is my take on it. Um, I would like to see um, six and eight remain R10M with some changes to the standards within R10M, and I'll, and I'll get to that. Um, there's no reason to talk about anything inside the triangle or along Taylor and Ocean 5824, because I've already talked about that. Um, my initial uh, assessment of, of parcels one and two was that two has the potential for not multifamily, but something more of a cluster type patio home thing. I like I like what Sarah said about the 3.2. It's still it's still low density. Uh, it's effectively R13 R13 is what what the zoning change would be. So and I would I don't know that anybody would have a problem with that in there. Uh, Initially, I said that parcel one had caused so much angst that I didn't see I didn't see any reason to even address it because it just caused too many. Um, there was just too much opposition to it. However, now what you said, I think that that's uh, a very attractive it's consideration. Going to be develop right and we're trying to plan for that development right control the density and i think this is the smartest way to do it right is to, that can be our cutoff for low density is 3.2 right anything higher be medium slash triangle right so i so i think that's a great idea um i'm an, i'm a, a hard no on seven just like i said before because it's in a neighborhood um that little that little green strip on the bottom where the boat ramp is 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 a no um that's a developed neighborhood uh and and i'm and of course i'm a yes on four because it's on 
uh, on Taylor Notion. So that's where I'm at. What I would, and I, I kind of feel like we have consensus. I don't, I don't know that anybody is anybody. Have I said anything that anyone disagrees with? The only thing I disagree with is on two. You know, at some point you're gonna, you're gonna get a density that is gonna require a package septic unit. Uh, but that isn't the principal reason on this one because you're keeping it 3.2. Unit three. Pardon? Yeah, 3.2. 3 3 3. Really low. But that is a, when we spoke in the last meeting, a golf club community, single family development. I would want one and two. I look at two just like I look at one because of the input. Right. Well, it would, we're talking about it remaining single family, but just a higher density, still low density, but potentially a higher density than R30 to allow for a patio home type of community in there. And I think, I, I just think that's a great idea. Um, Could I, I don't know that the owners of those two are even interested in doing anything with it. I think one is probably interested. They've already shown interest. Two, you know, that might, they may have absolutely no interest in it, but but for the purpose of planning, I think that's I think that's a great idea, and I I don't know that you have opposition to that, Mike. Are Are you thinking uh, with the discussion? Are you thinking more in terms of like the residential cluster, the patio yes. home type development? You're not thinking of condos or right. townhouses no, or the patio right. Okay, I just want to make sure I was clear. Yes. So. Yeah. I, I think I see more of these cluster homes. I've seen just very few of those things. You see how. You know, when you go for a permit for each house, okay, and say they're what, two and three bedroom cluster homes, how do you how do you treat the septic? You know, when you have to have a, a septic field and repair area, and how you fit that in there without a package plan? You read literature, and beyond a certain size, they require a package septic unit when they're too close together. No, uh, you could have you could have uh, that density of uh, Four bedroom house doesn't require that criteria for septic and repair area. Well, 40 gallons per bedroom. I think it's such a low density, relatively speaking, that if it's a reasonable lot, it should perk for 3.2 units per acre, I would think. I don't even know so. if it's, if it should even be part of this discussion, whether or not it perks, because we're just talking about the potential for planning purposes. If that lot doesn't perk, it doesn't matter how much we say build it, it won't come, Well, right? I mean, that's the reality is it, of it. I, is. I think. But can I, Mike, let me interrupt. Frank, didn't I bring up this same question about wastewater in cluster homes? And you, you had told me that there's individual septic on all of those properties at by the Western Regional Beach access on Emerald Isle, and that new mixed use area? There are not individual septic systems for each unit. There is a septic on-site wastewater system for the entire complex. It's I in see. the center okay. in the grassy That's area right. there. Okay. But, but there are certainly, um, really the, whether it's 3.2 units per acre or four units per acre or some other number, it's really not for the residential cluster. It's really not that much different than a single family neighborhood. So I think whether or not you wanted to have individual septic systems for those, that may be an option, um, or you wanted to have a group or a, a, you know, for the entire complex, you could have one large septic system for it. My, my experience with this area tells me that I, I think septic would not be a, a hindrance um, for that kind of development. Well, it, it would be a septic. Yeah. Well, I understand. Most likely. It depends on the site. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you stay under 3,000 gallons, you are regulated by Parker County and not the state of North Carolina. And as long as you have, you can have multiple units flowing into one 3,000 gallon septic at that time, perfectly all Yeah. I, I think. If it was something in the neighborhood of yeah. three to four units per acre, I, I would. I think you should assume that they could get septic permits for those units. So the the, the only question that I have is number ten, because 
um, I think there would probably be some pretty stiff opposition from the people in that community. Uh, and that's up to those people in the event that the owner of that property wanted to rezone that property, the other people in that neighborhood, just like the people in Star Hill, you know, all came down, suited up and showed up, let their opposition be known. And, and then we or the Board of Commissioners takes that into consideration. So I think that's what has to happen with, with Tim. You know, I, I, I don't know. Um, I don't know any other place to go with that. How many acres is that actually? That's 3.1. That um, so, so that's where I'm at. My idea is this, and I have my phone in my hand because I, I, I want to have all my notes for it. My idea is that we would uh, not come up right now with a new zoning district, but that we make changes to the R10M zoning category. And uh, those changes would be that we reduce the uh, minimum size from five acres to two acres. Um, and uh, the existing R10M properties would be grandfathered for the location, but not the standards. So in other words, um, multifamily would only stay in the triangle and not outside the triangle ex except for six and eight because they're already, they're already zoned. As far as one and two, when we're talking about that still low density homes, but potentially patio homes, I think that that is something that we table for now because, and that will be Next meeting, we'll talk about the standards for cluster homes. But I would at least like to get something before the Board of Commissioners for an amendment, a text amendment to R10M. What's the room? Uh, I think we need to, I, I would like to see some work product come out of the planning board. I think we just need to start moving the updates to the UDO along. And Potentially, every every planning board meeting we should be making changes, and every board of commissioners meetings, I would like to see them making a decision on those those changes to get this UDO where it needs to be. Uh, Susan, what? I understand what you're saying. Um, why wouldn't you consider? Working our way through this. For R10 to make changes to R10 yeah, before making changes. So we, you know, sometimes when you make a change here in the very beginning, and then you get to the end of the project, you say, "Geez, I wish I hadn't done that." And I, I, I'm wondering if. Well, why don't you hear me out on what the changes are, and and let me know if you think that that could potentially uh, cause any problems. Right, so reducing from five to two, uh, no more than four dwellings per structure, uh, on lot parking or rear parking only, no street facing parking lots. And it's because parking lots are ugly. And impervious. Huh? I said impervious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, in other words, so if so let's say that it was um, townhomes. They could; those townhomes could have garages and uh, driveways. If they didn't want to have driveways and garages, then you could do what they do in other city homes. And the parking there's like an alley in the back. This is how they are in California, right, Frank? Alley behind the homes, and you drive when you come home. You drive into the alley and onto your property, and that's where you park. And you just walk in your back door. From the front, all you have is a sidewalk and the front of the homes. So it's a very pleasant. Is there a garage on the front side? Uh, that's mm -hmm. if there was no garages. Okay. So in other words, we're not we're not telling somebody that you have to have a garage, although everybody wants a garage. Every, you know, we're not saying you have to have a garage, only that 
parking has to be on the lot, whether it's in the front for a driveway in a garage or in the back if it's. Would you explain yeah. what you mean? You said copy no more than four dwellings per structure. Then the next two things you said, please. On lot or rear parking only. On, on lot. On lot. Or rear parking right. only. No street facing parking lots. Unless you have a, a, a driveway. I mean, you could well, that would be a parking lot. lot. That wouldn't be a parking lot. That would be your driveway. But you yeah. could park in your driveway. Yes. And you could have a garage facing yes. the street. Yes. Okay. On lot or rear parking only, unless you have a driveway and a garage facing. Well, that the street. would be on lot. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's uh, what I wanted to understand. Minimum width per dwelling, 22 feet. <laughs> I had originally said 24. Uh, but when I went through and looked at a lot of plans for um for multifamily structures, uh there was about a hundred times more the options for 22 with than there was for 24. Uh, so I thought it was reasonable uh, to go with a minimum of 22. And that I don't think that two feet is gonna make much of a difference. You're still, it still is a very pleasant look. Uh, 20 foot green buffer along the entire perimeter, no allowance for the golf course. So right now the recommendation or the suggestion Frank made last time was that if it was if a lot was up against the the golf course it you wouldn't have to have a perimeter buffer or screening or whatever and I didn't agree with that because in, in the event that the park that the golf course isn't there at some point you want to still have the same the same standards so my recommendation is that we we do have that uh, 20 foot buffer. Uh, it doesn't have to be screening, but it should at least be a landscape buffer. That's in the back. That's all four sides. So, um, and I would prefer to see a landscaped buffer rather than screening, you know, where it's supposed to, you know, grow to 10 feet. I think it would, it's much more pleasant looking if you have a, a, a 20 foot strip of nicely landscaped area and then beyond that are pleasant homes you know i think i just think that looks better that's not a screening buffer that is not just that's what i'm saying They're a buffer but not a screening buffer it would be a landscaped they buffer. still see it but right and we would have to come up with some type of standard because right now what we really have is a screening buffer we kind of have to change that language so we don't want it to be 10 feet in three years we don't ever want it to be 10 feet right because it kind of that's what it kind of starts looking for um, no stacking uh, of of, uh, of dwelling, so no dwelling on top of another. So we will never see in this town um, something like the condos over at Megan's Bay. Three, you know, there's condos on each of the three floors. So no stacking, no dwellings on top of each other. Um, I had originally uh, thought that we should my suggestion was that we reduce the height for R10M to 30 feet, which is what Frank's recommendation had been with the text change. But then when I went back and looked at uh, the UDO, it is right now it's 40, and I and I think 40 is fine because it's 40 across the board, and I don't see any reason why we would to change it to make it lower unless the airfield has some issue. In a particular area with height, I think 40 across the board is fine. So that's where I'm at. I, I I'm not far far along as you are on this. I was coming here tonight to see where we put them, not the condition. I agree, absolutely agree with what you just said. Is we have to decide on this, but I have not looked at any of these things and looked at any condos that you're describing so it's a little pretty good for me i was just hoping that we could decide well, maybe we could put them here if the property maybe they'd be able to stay in there mm -hmm. and 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 in future meetings now that we have, we're kind of thinking in terms of you know a, a, 
cluster homes, that kind of thing. I think that, you know, in future meetings, we could start talking about cluster a, a zoning category for cluster homes. And then I would like to get to mixed use at some point. Um, I know that that's a lot, but if we get through this, then maybe we can get to mixed use. And that is the recommendation that the contract, that the um, our land use plan consultants have recommended that we that we add mixed use zoning district that we come up with those standards as soon as as soon as possible. So I would at least like to get to that at some point. Um, but I think we need to do these other things first. Well, I, I have to agree with Mike. We don't always agree, <laughs> but I agree that I don't want to rush into something tonight and regret it. We've got a lot to go through and to look at, and I apologize. I just didn't get my homework done that you assigned to us to drive through branding. And that's just one example of something we can look at. Mm -hmm. Yes, there are many, and I applaud you for doing such good homework and looking at all that you've looked at, but I just, I just haven't had a chance. And Frank, before you came on board, the planning board had taken a vote six to zero to add the word detached to the table of permitted uses for a single thing. Um, and I would like to see that. I, I, to... Yeah, I actually have some possible suggested language for you in the next item um, that and, uh, accomplishes that, I think. Okay. So. Zoning ordinance, and we're removing some of these special use. We are, but I'd rather do that than jump on RN R10. But it's up to y'all. I mean, there there are uh, uh, special use permits listed for stuff that the town board long ago may allow uses in B20. That's just crazy. Well, yeah. well, maybe maybe I could make this suggestion to the group. Um, I think I've got a pretty clear sense of where everybody's at on these issues and I'm happy to repeat it and kind of clarify with everybody, but maybe for the next meeting, I can come back to you with some specific ordinance language to make the changes to R10M, which I think are all reasonable changes for you to consider um, and also provide a new map that shows the parcels that I think you all are comfortable with possibly extending that zoning classification to if that works and I can circulate that to you certainly before the meeting. I'm just going to suggest that each person take two or three of those special uses and work over and do just that. Well, I, I'm, but I'm, I'm, I'm talking about the, the exercise on the R10M. Um, that, that, so, what, I, I mean, what I heard, I think, was pretty clear from, I think, everyone. If I'm mistaken, please let me know that. But there was comfort with uh, the multifamily option on parcels three, four, six, and eight on the map. And I think there was also a fair amount of comfort with parcel let's see, nine. Uh, parcel nine and a fair amount of support for the whole assisted living complex type concept. Um, and then I think those were the ones where it was pretty clear from everybody. Now there were some other folks who made some other comments here and there, but to me, it was three, four, six, eight, and nine. And then I think the other thing that I heard the group saying was um, some support for some sort of 3.2 unit per acre cluster housing, uh, maybe on one, two, and possibly 10, um, but that that may be a, a more detailed discussion. So if I'm hearing you all correctly, I can certainly prepare the maps and I can prepare the uh, ordinance amendment languages for you to look at more specifically at your next meeting. When would be an appropriate time to talk to the owners? Well, I think certainly we want to do something that the owners are going to be comfortable with. It's going to be up to the owner to request whether or not they want to rezone to this parcel. So by my way of thinking, the action that you all would take is simply identifying those parcels as good candidates for consideration in the future and certainly not taking away any options for the landowners currently. So it would basically be at their option going forward. 
the underlying the underlying zoning would remain in place for those parcels until such time that the owner of the parcel requested rezoning. The exercise that you're going through is identifying that, yeah, we're willing to consider it for this, and these are reasonable considerations for this kind of development. I have a question whenever y'all have a break. Yeah. So my question is, I'm a little unclear on Sarah's proposal, the 3.2 units per acre. Is that a change in the density of the surrounding neighborhood there? Or That's, is it the same density? That is the density of the uh, R13 zoning district. So that is the highest density in the in the single family residential neighborhoods. Okay. Thank you. That that helps me. It it, it essentially would allow one more unit per acre um, than currently is allowed in R30 is really what it comes down to. So gotcha. Would, would in a in a single family development, a, a patio home, cluster home type development, not in a mm -hmm. condominium development if I'm characterizing it correctly. So that strikes would, a good balance. Would those parcels then be rezoned or, or the owners asked if they wanted to rezone or would the, the zone in that area be changed to R13? But I think I think the, the thought is that we would develop a new zoning district that we may call residential cluster, and it would basically apply to maybe parcels one and two and ten, and it would allow 3.2 units per acre, um, and then it would be up to the owner of those parcels to make that specific request to the planning board and the board of commissioners. Yeah, I think certainly. I mean, I've had some communications with some of the owners out there. Certainly, we want their input on this. I think the, the key to me is that you're providing additional options for those owners and giving them other choices, and you're not taking away any options or choices. So I, I would think any owner would view that as a positive thing going forward. But we can have those conversations with them if that's something you'd like us to do more formally. So. If they didn't want to change it. Right. They're in the driver's seat for this thing. It's just correct. I think if we don't do anything, of course, it's going to get a lot more complex when we get inside the triangle and sure. that stuff. But if we don't sit down and think about these things, things just happen as they happen without any pre planning. And I think this is it's worth a shot. You go through, like you said, those things and suggest that this might be an option and see what you say. So Frank, I think you you kind of got what. Yeah, I, I, I guess I'm asking you all. If you all nod your heads, uh, then I will go ahead and draft the appropriate ordinances and prepare a map for you to look at at your next meeting. And I've got um, parcels three, four, six, eight, and nine. Um, suitable for some sort of multifamily development and extension of the R10M zoning district with the changes that were talked about. Um, and then I've got possible consideration of lots or parcels one, two, and 10 on the map with a residential cluster, a 3.2 unit per acre uh, approach going objection. forward. Okay. Well, as far as nine goes, I think that will also be potentially a whole nother zoning district mm -hmm. because we are talking about if we're talking about three stories that we would be stacking um, dwellings you know a, a traditional what, what i'm thinking of for um assisted living you know is basically like an apartment house so I think nine may actually be a whole nother animal that we don't have to tackle tonight. So. Okay. Um, are you suggesting that we may have a, a third zoning classification for number nine that would promote the concept Paxson um, suggested? Well, 
I'm, I'm suggesting that nine potentially would be um, another zoning category and of course mixed use. Okay. All right. Mixed so, use for nine? No. So just another zoning category that we've got to. Uh, 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 All right, so one more time, just I want to make sure that I'm capturing the, the thoughts correctly. So I've got um, possible expansion of the R10M to three, four, six, and eight. Six and eight are already R10M with the changes to the um, standards for that zoning district. I've got consideration of nine uh, for some other approach that promotes the assisted living concept that Paxson mentioned. Um, and then I have uh, parcels one, two, and 10 uh, for consideration of the concept that Sarah mentioned of the 3.2 units per acre patio home style developments, um, still single family units, um, still low density. Basically. 11 would be um, would fall into the triangle. Yeah. And I, I was trying to look and yeah. see if those three houses next to them, they're not in the HOA, right? I'm sorry, sorry. next to where? Um, next to number 11. No. Yeah. So that map isn't even recorded. Isn't that little peninsula next to 11 actually part of that yes. property? Yes, yeah, it's just it not is. colored in there. Yes, so, it is. so, so. 11 really potentially could be cluster, it could be R10M, or it could remain um, uh, R30. But I think that's it's good, next to B20. I mean, there's a, a lot of options because it's right on Highway 24. But it's a good candidate for um, R13. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think it should be considered as one of the potential. Well, a new, not the density of R13, yeah. but but diff, a di different conditions. I, I, I'm not so sure on that one. That is the potential for all of that being uh, waterfront lots with proper dredging and permit. That you could, uh, you know, similar to what they did in, in Cape Point. In Cape Point, they came down in and they have, I forget how many houses in there, but they didn't have enough for everyone to have a waterfront. So they set a section of the waterfront. And the 11 houses or 10 houses that weren't on the waterfront, those people get, ended up getting a dock. And this, that would be, if this were handled somewhat similar, that would be valid to the property. Mm -hmm. So that, that, I wouldn't tell them less than what it is right now. And there's a couple of lots that we didn't talk about, but that would, would actually um, also you know, be potentially the R10M, and that's those uh, those B20 properties. I believe there's three of them uh, just outside the triangle on the south side of 24, going towards Moorhead. If you look at the zoning map, you can see them. Yeah, let me pull that up. In red. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Gosh. Oh, there we go. So, which are you speaking of? Because so I don't think east of this area. <laughs> Those talking about these parcels in this area, right? Well, see, that's where the beyond. Is. No, beyond it, east of it. East of Aren't, it. In this area, well, isn't that one right there? The part of that, that one right there, there is two that's acres. The storage unit. Yeah. Yeah. The the medical office is right here. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and then one of those is a storage unit. Right. And the other is the day spa. Yeah. And the uh -huh. other is the Carteret Cafe. So you would consider them for residential? There's. I would consider them for because they're on 24. I would consider them potentially for for R10M. Like if, if they. Right. Are you saying you expand the mix? No, I'm not. That's if they wanted to. You got to understand that those that 
those lots, you cannot build homes. Right now in that zoning district, you cannot build um, townhouses. But if it was rezoned to R10M, you could build townhouses. Well, there's- and I would rather have townhouses than storage units. <laughs> we won't have any more storage units. I'm just, I'm just talking about potentially what area. Uh, I realize that those lots are- um, Suggest, you know, when you get to the triangle, there's opportunities for everything we want in there. Much mm -hmm. more complex. But, you know, a lot of that stuff already has businesses that are thriving. But it's interesting. It's a way to clean the place up. To rezone it at the owner's option, they can do that. But they, they, they're permitted yeah. to do it if they so elect to do it. It's a great way, I hadn't thought of it before, to get rid of some eyesores. So you're saying R10 on the highway? I, I would rather see R10 on the highway than any other business. I mean, if, if you're going to put anything it's with an M on it, it'd be better on the, on, yeah. on the highway. And, and, and think about what it would look like, right? So it would have a 20 foot landscape buffer in the front. There wouldn't be a parking lot. There would be parking in the back. It would be and driving along 24, any place. It, it, no, it would just look completely different. Are you going to be the one that's going to suggest to those owners that they might do that? I'm, all I'm saying is that I think that that should be an option because we can't just think in terms of developing ex undeveloped properties, but potential redevelopment. But two acre minimum, I would assume. But isn't that that one is two acres east of there? I don't believe there are two acres. The one, no, the next one over, the yeah. next one east. Well, that's, that's the clinic. This one right here. That one. Well, is that two acres? No, I'm sure. No, no. we can no. we can look. I I don't believe that they no, are. Um, there is. I thought I, because that's what I was looking for in there. Okay, well I'm wrong. That happens all the time. <laughs> There's a almost two acre vacant parcel right here that's zoned commercial. Um, that's on the corner of Channel View Court and 24. Mm -hmm. That may be something that's, you want to think about. The, uh, that's not the store. That that one's vacant. Th this one right here is vacant, and I'll actually I'll put the photography on. It'll come up. That's Yard Works right, right there. It's right. almost two acres. Uh, right. This this is all the clinic. This right. entire parcel here, and then. Um, I think this is the one that you were referencing, Susan. Is that right? So, sure. 1.4 1. 1. 4 4. Yeah. So, so those all appear to be less than two acres. But but to Bruce's point, if you want to encourage a particular type of development, you can come up with a different standard. If that's what you want to encourage. And there's so. the lot. Is it is it Bayshore? The the lot uh, west, uh, right there. This particular this lot right here. Yeah. What is that? Well, there's a cemetery. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's the cemetery. And if I'm not mistaken, the town. Because he tried to do something with that property. Yeah. The town and board said that that could be mixed use. Yeah. At one time, yeah, yeah. and I. Yeah. Is that the is that little divot there is on the is that the cemetery? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's showing as one point yeah one point one acres give or take. But again, I would I would rather see basically anything other than another storage unit. Well, so. But the storage units are not conforming use in the town. Well, no. they they always have been, and and here What's we that? have. And here we have four new ones, so that the board approved. So I, I'm Susan, not. Susan, can I comment on that real quick? Yeah. I, I I seem to remember that whenever we approved it, we approved it contingent on a green buffer 
zone between you know between the fence and the road i don't see anything in there like that maybe they're still planning to do it but i don't see any progress there isn't 20 feet to do it so there is a requirement for all new construction to have a 20 foot buffer if it's on 24 taylor or taylor notion but that was treated as if everything about it was grandfather so we will no, never see I no, not the 20 foot buffer piece. I'm talking about a green screen of some kind, yes, that's like what I'm talking crate about. myrtles yeah. or something. Yes. Yeah. Oh, are you talking about when he was here? Yes. Like, yes. When he yes. said he would do it. Yep. Yeah, we were all like, man, we don't, you know, yeah, we're not really was, sure. Was, We'd like a buffer. We'd like some kind of green screen. And he goes, I'll put trees all the way down it. We're like, okay, that's good. You know, and we talk about it, and then we're talking about something that happened a little while back. You know, you look at that particular property and for the 20 some years that I've been here, that thing was the eyesore of an unused storage. Mm -hmm. So I would not want to see another one, but it was better to improve that thing than didn't do nothing at all. So, right. as far as I agree with you, that it's not permitted. Not a permitted use within the town, so we ought to stick with that. And then, well, then let's go through this. Let's quickly go through this table of permitted use and, and at least start taking a stab at it. That's too much in one night. <laughs> You're faster than everybody here. Do you want me to take a shot at preparing a map and possible text amendments for you to consider based on the previous discussion? Just to bring some closure to that item, I'm happy to prepare that and bring it back to you. Uh, identifying the specific parcels that might be appropriate for rezoning in the future with the standards that we've talked about here tonight, yeah. both for the R10M changes and the cluster patio home changes that we talked about. So, yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll prepare that and bring that back to you at your next meeting. Okay. Once we get that, I think it might take it in steps. Yeah, but not. Wouldn't take long for us to run through the table of permitted use. No. So the three pages. I have oh, two. When you take each no, no. use. No, you, look no you're at right. It. We don't have the rest of it. We have it's Where, further, it, it's further it, back. Oh, it. okay. okay. I like the idea of knocking something out. Yeah. This is one that I think we can knock out. And then we can move on to the other. Yes. And with Frank came with Frank's help. I, I think yeah. I've been. And I, I just think it's important for you all to see it in text form. Uh, it'll yeah. be in the same form that you would theoretically ask the Board of Commissioners right. to consider so that you all are comfortable with it and you certainly can adjust it or tweak it any way you'd like at that right. time. So along with a map so that it's clear to folks. Um, and in the meantime, I will reach out to the affected property owners and have a conversation with them. So. I think it would be nice if we sent them a draft. Be happy to. That'd be great. Well, we we're proposing and let's get them sure. a chance. So if you're comfortable with that, I, I think you could move on to item number four uh, or five, depending on what your discretion is. N number four was really three and four kind of got combined together anyway. It was a discussion of the potential standards, um, which we talked about some of those things. One of the things I did want to point out to you, um, if you look at the memo, uh, for item four. Let me find it here. I think I've got the direction from you to draft that, but if you look at page two of the memo, you'll see some suggested amendments to the definitions of single family dwellings, multifamily dwellings, and then also a definition of single family cluster dwelling. And I think that accomplishes the goals that you outlined, uh, Susan. So in the case of a, a single family dwelling, it just makes it clear that it's a separate, distinct, physically detached uh, unit, that it's basically like you'd consider for a single family home or maybe a patio home or something. It is standalone by itself. It is single family. Um, for the multifamily dwelling, just added some clarifying language that um, makes it clear that they're in the same building, they're in the same structure, they've got a shared wall. And then for the single family cluster dwelling, um, it basically makes it clear that these are single family units, but that there is common area ownership and common area maintenance. There's no 
shared walls. No shared walls. They're separate, distinct uh, units, detached units. Is, is, is there opposition to um, duplexes in any of these areas? Not that would that are not um, not R ten M. Let's say a lot could easily fit a duplex, meet all of the setbacks, the side setbacks, and have each dwelling at least twenty two feet. So what are we talking about? That's a sixty four foot lot. Sixty four what? No. Okay. Our minimum is 70 feet for the width of the lot in Cape Cod Unless that was changed in the middle. I'm, I'm just giving yeah, a, yeah. A, you know, a, a picture of. There, there are duplexes that, that I know about here in Cape Cod that, you know, I'm not going mm -hmm. to rat them out. Right. If there are existing duplexes mm -hmm. in Cape Cod Red. I think on, on the duplexes, duplexes have a, you go back to the 60s when you saw uh, a rectangular building that could have been an entrance on each end and a tie went in. Because you, we haven't seen, this has been zoned RKM for a long period of time. But I think if somebody come in and wanted to put duplexes in, they'd look a whole lot different than they were mm -hmm. many years ago. Because nobody knows except maybe me where those duplexes are. <laughs> No. It's it's currently in the table of permitted uses. That's why I'm, that's why I'm asking about yeah. it's a line in the table. I have no objection. I think they're a, a good use. Of <laughs> so do we want to do we want to shoot through this? Um, so I think so. Th th there's a separate item. Number five has got the entire list of table the table of permitted and special uses. Right. You only have the first couple pages under item four because I was just trying to highlight the R10M for you. So. Yeah, it, under item number five, you've got the entire list of the table of permitted and special uses. So I think the goal is to reduce the number of uh, special use permits mm -hmm. on this table of permitted uses. When you reduce it, so if, we're, if we want to take away um, something that currently says SUP, then we have to, we have a choice to, you know, would probably be permitted, and then we would have to write some type of standard yes. to that. So keep that in mind as we go through. Uh, uh, on the first page, um, alcoholic beverage store. Would be a P, not an issue. B20. I think it's silly to have it in B32. Either way. Why why was that changed to SUP? Does anybody does anybody know? Because that that was the reason for why so many of these that they just changed uses in the past are now right. SUP. It, may, it might be easier for you all to decide which ones you think should still be a special That's use permit. Gonna, yeah. yeah. So. Right. I mean, really, I, I was so surprised when I saw so many of them when we, when we had permitted these by right for a year. Well, I guess I, I guess what I'm, ultimately it's your judgment and, and the board of commissioners' judgment. But when I went through this list, I would say 90% of the ones that said SUP, I personally decided that should, probably should be a permitted use. So if it helps your discussion and makes it go smoother, you might want to just focus on the ones you think should still be a special use and then maybe. We just say it, make everything else a permitted use. That's what I was suggesting. Okay. Or okay. remove it. Yeah. Well, well, yeah, that's right. If you don't think it's appropriate, so. Yeah. Um, armories and stadiums. Do we? Yeah. Do we? Do. Do we? Do we want to plan for armories and stadiums? Depends on if Onslow County invades us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
this is almost overwhelming for me mm -hmm. just to just to sort out. I spent most of my time thinking about the triangle here. We talked about outside the triangle. But I think that's something that I would like to have for just one meeting where we mm -hmm. go through that, sit down, we pick those things apart and decide whether one whether it should be in there. If it should be in there, are they new mm -hmm. conditions or standards that need to apply to it? And get that thing whittled down to something that's more reasonable. That will be my suggestion. So here's here, here's what I would say then. Uh, between now and the next meeting, everybody go through this table of primitive uses and and chop it. Your own personal chop. Get it to me, I'll combine it, and then I'll get it to Frank. Well, or we could just if you want to do all the work, no. we'll just send it directly that's to you. That's we'll perfectly fine. We can discuss it, but let's let's at least get it. Well, you said Tried. final chop. We'll try to get some preliminary consensus, yes. I th which is a good approach, yeah. I think. So. so I think, you know, um, I think there's there's a lot in here that we probably all agree on and don't, doesn't even have to be discussed. I think what we should discuss probably is what what we don't agree on. So, so does that sound good? Everybody do their own individual chop, get it to Frank. Um, would it be appropriate for us to mention that some of these things have been uh, added to the zoning list of permitted uses by right and by former boards? Yeah. And there, I can't figure any reason why there would be a special use permit for those uses. Yeah, ultimately, it, it's your judgment. I think probably most of your colleagues agree with you on that. I, I certainly agree with you on that. There's many things on here that probably are more appropriate to be a permitted use. There's probably some that you might want to keep a special use, and there's probably some you may want to just take off the list altogether. So, the churches must be a special use permit in every single zone in town. It's just ludicrous. I share that concern. That's really one of the things for this group to decide. I, Especially so. since there is a condition for churches in every single sure. category sure. already. Yeah. So. I, I think if you all just simply take this table of permitted uses and mark it up in the way that you think is most appropriate, we will compile that together for you and try to give you some preliminary idea of the consensus, and then you can focus on where you might have some differences of opinion in the next discussion. Format. Uh, you want us to use the, the actual table of permitted uses and write in the margins or, or add footnotes in the bottom for this thing, or, you know, just to make it easier for you. Yeah, well, let, let me do this. Let, let, me, let me create a standard form that will have this information on it so it's not quite so busy and muddy so that you all can comment on that. We, we can do that, and I'll get that out to you within the next week or so. Um, the, the other thing I wanted to point your attention to is if you look at the memorandum for this item, um, you know, we currently have language in our unified development. I'm sorry to interrupt, um, but I missed what Paxson said a minute ago about the churches, that line item on churches. I couldn't hear it quite because the microphone, I think, is too far away. I'm sorry. Well, I just commented that, that churches uh, are required to have a special use permit in every single zone that exists. Look at page 70, Neil. Yeah, so. yeah, I see that, but I didn't hear the comment. What was the, was, were you for that or against that or what was your comment? Well, I thought that churches were allowed in any zone as long as they had five acres under our okay. present zone. I, that's okay, what so I You're saying if five acres, then it would be a permitted by right use. I think that's correct. Okay. Okay. I just didn't hear you. Uh, thank Sorry. you for that. I appreciate it. Sorry. That's fine. I got you. I, I, I just wanted to make you aware that, as you all, I think, know uh, from your previous meetings a couple months ago, we have language in the ordinance that says if it's not listed, um, the person can apply for a special use permit. And that's what led to the townhouse requests uh, that came before everybody earlier this year. Um, one thing the board may want to consider is eliminating that language and going with something along the lines that I included in the memorandum here, um, which essentially says if it's listed, uh, it's a permitted use, or it might even show it as a special use permit still. 
if it's not listed, but it's a close match with something else, it's ultimately the UDO administrator's interpretation. Um, and then if it's not listed, there's a potential for a request for a text amendment um, going forward. And I think that's a legislative process that would probably be an easier process for us to conduct than the special use permit process. So if you're comfortable with something along these lines, we can prepare that for your consideration in the future also. It would essentially take away the option for anybody to ask for a special use permit for anything. But they could always ask for a zoning change or a text amendment. Correct. Yeah. And, and, and those are legislative decisions as opposed to quasi-judicial decisions. And those would come before the planning board for a recommendation and then ultimately to the board of commissioners for a final decision. Well, based on the agenda, I was prepared to be here till midnight. <laughs> we had a lot. To I was. <laughs> All right, so then I, I guess the, the, the direction that I will take is that we will allocate one of your upcoming meetings for a discussion just on the table of permitted and special uses. Um, and now that I say that, um, the next meeting, I'll be bringing back to you the map and the text amendments, and then we can start the special use permit table of permitted use discussion. So it won't be at a standalone meeting, I guess, unless you want it to be. I'll defer to your judgment. Yeah. The only comment I would make is uh, none of this has been changed in about 40 years, so we don't have to do it in a month. Okay. Right. I understand. Right. Right. We, I think, well, a lot of what we're changing was only changed recently with the new UDO. I understand. So that. a lot of it is changing back but, or, or updating what we probably should have updated differently in the that, UDL. That's right. Too. Yeah. And, I read every page of the UDL, yeah. but it's like reading a math book, a whole math book in one night. You know, you can't absorb. Yeah. You know, you have to have these kinds of discussions we're having right here to say, "Well, I see what somebody else means." That's why I'm saying I, I'm trying. I'm not trying to slow down the process. I'm saying we need to go slowly. Well, and I agree with what you're saying, mm -hmm. but I think what Susan's talking about on this R10, though, on a relative basis. A lot easier to knock that one out and be done with it. Move on with the other ones that you're talking about. I just feel like we need to submit something for the big board. We need a work product. Yes. Yep. That's just a gut feeling. Well, I'll have it ready for you to make that decision at your next meeting. Um, and you can approve it then, or you mm -hmm. can table it or consider it at another meeting. But it'll be ready for it to go forward if you want. So we pretty much have consensus on it we should just be ahead of time you know let's let's when he sends out the agenda let's make sure we go through it so if we have any issues we should we should raise them at that point and we should be able to take a vote on that um, at next meeting and there shouldn't be a lot left on that there shouldn't be a lot of discussion left on that because it's been discussed pretty well the last couple of meetings and then we can I think we could if we also do the work of chopping our individual Special table of permitted uses, then I think we've got a we should have something there that we could go through as well. And and I'll get you that form sometime real soon. And I'll also provide a copy of the old one um, so that you have that as a reference as well. So but let's not forget number six is on the agenda. The date What's of the next meeting? Yeah. When is our next meeting? So I, I apologize when we talked about changing the meeting date at the last meeting, um, you all agreed on the third Tuesday of each month. And I think that's that works well going forward. Um, unfortunately, I didn't realize that I have a conflict uh, for that particular night. So, um, and, and I think that um, others may have a conflict later on in the week. So I suggested Monday, uh, I'm sorry, Tuesday, September 27th. And that still gives us enough time to get it on the Board of Commissioners agenda for that October meeting, which I believe is, it's the second Monday in October. It's it's plenty of time to get the advertisements in the paper and move forward. So. Okay. Save rounds. Everybody okay with the 27th? Mm -hmm. Hey, Frank, you got anything?
Um, the, the only comment I would share with you is that we are working to finalize the land use plan. Uh, we got all the comments back from various state agencies, and most of them are pretty pretty insignificant changes, not, not nothing real substantive from a policy standpoint. The most significant changes that I think you'll see are have to do with Forest Service land and their concerns about the bicycle trail uh, going forward, and I'll have some revised maps for you with that. Um, they were pretty pretty significant concerns. I don't think they change any of the policy statements that are in the document. They mostly reflect um, the depiction of those properties and how they might be used in the future. So um, still working with the consultant to get that done. And when I have that, I'll share that with you all. So that may show up on your September 27th meeting agenda. It depends on how quickly they can turn it around, but we're getting real close. Did I say that the Forest Service about the trail going by? So the, the Forest Service um, has concerns about the trail cutting through their property. Um, there was a map in the land use plan that showed it basically hugging the southern boundary of their property inside the triangle. And um, they... Oh, that was a dead issue. Yeah, well, they, anyway, it was that was a comment that they communicated during the land use plan review. Um, in my conversations with them, they are comfortable with allowing it on Highway 58. Um, in the, they actually they claim that they own everything in the Highway 58 right of way also, um, but they're comfortable with it going in what you would think of as the Highway 58 right of way, same line that it currently exists in. Not so. a shortcut through there. Yeah, they're not comfortable with a shortcut. Um, That's interesting because when we went through there, I met with those people when we came down. They actually looked at it. Talked about putting one of those, uh, one of those landscaping timbers and a mulch trail through there, and they were fine with it. Now, but we never got down to drawings and everything because it took us forever to get yeah. where we are right, right now. But they, they could have been a change of people sitting in. Yeah. I had yeah. a long conversation. And, and I think I, I wouldn't even be overly concerned with this change at this point because it's just the land use plan. We'll certainly still have the conversations with the Forest Service and there may be some other alternative routes to explore too. So um, it's not a, that that's really the most significant thing that was identified in the comments from the various state agencies. Um, but I'll, I'll summarize for you what the changes were when it gets to that point. But that's the one that really seemed the most significant. So. No. The original plan? No. Okay. Is that it, Frank? That's it. Thank you. Uh, Mike, you got anything? No, I just... Um, I'm very pleased that we're digging into this stuff and doing it in a very amicable way. It's never been done before in all the years that I've spent in here. I think that we're going to come out with some things that will be improved. Whether or not they're implemented or taken by the board of commissioners or the property owner, at least I will feel good that we're going to do this. Action. Uh, no comment. No, no further comments. Okay. Uh, all, all I have is uh, just that I love this new setup. I think it's a way to get work done, looking at each other, all looking at the same board. Um, I know there's people behind me somewhere. I don't know how many people are left, uh, but I do like the new setup. Um, and uh, and again, I, I would like to see us start uh, start churning out some work product uh, to give to the board. That's all I got. Sarah? I don't have anything. No confirmed. Did, 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 Oh, I just I second your comment about the conference table. I think that's a fantastic format. I like it. Keep keep doing it. One other comment, real quick. Um, today is actually the expiration of the governor's COVID nineteen um, order, emergency order. So we may not have the opportunity to do remote participation in the future. Um, that is allowed as per that order. So um, I know that we do not have that option for the governing body. Uh, any further. I need to double check on an advisory board like the planning board. So um, that was I a. We always did it, even before COVID. 
Yeah, so I, I need to double check on the planning board. So it may not be an option going forward. It is not an option for the Board of Commissioners uh, going forward anymore because the emergency order expired and it was put in place for that purpose. So I'll get clarity on it for y'all. <laughs> and, that, and that involves remote participation by the actual members of the governing body or the advisory board. The public can still watch it. I mean, oh, so okay. yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I apologize. Okay. Remote participation okay. by the members, okay. I'm so sorry. Everybody's so everybody's gotta show up, basically. That's correct. Okay. The decision makers have to. Okay, nothing else. Can I get a motion to adjourn? A second, please. Second. All in favor? Okay, thanks, folks. Bye, Neil. Bye, y'all. Thanks for allowing me at least this time. It was it was fun. Uh -huh. <laughs> Good job, buddy.